Hey everybody, welcome back to Gardening with the Landscape Connection. My name is Michelle. I own a garden center in Northern Illinois Zone 5. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm so happy that you joined us. See down there, there's a subscribe button. So if you love our videos, make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell, that way you know when our videos come out and leave your comments because I would love to hear from you. Or if you have a gardening problem, I would love to try and answer that for you. Share with your friends and make sure that if you love the content or you want to see different content, let me know. My channel is all about gardening. And so everything from herbs and vegetables to annuals, shrubs, perennials, all different kinds of fun things. So today is kind of a hodgepodge video because I have so many projects that I've started. I thought I would show you what I'm doing to bring you to the next step on a lot of the different things that we started. So one of the things that we did in our very first video way back in January was we actually planted up tulip bulbs and these are the Menton tulips. Look at these, aren't they great? And so these have come up very nicely. I'm really super happy with them. They are ready to go outside. They don't have any flowers with them yet, but they're ready to go outside and they'll continue to flower. Then what will happen is when they're done putting on their beautiful show and the tulips are done, I will actually go back in, cut that tulip back and then let the foliage start to die back. And I will take these and transplant them into the ground, fertilize them, and then they'll start to recharge and re-energize for next year. And then these will come back. So what I wanted to do though, was I do want to dress these up. So I have a bench that I have at home that I'm going to set these on. And what I decided to do was I was going to plant pansies in these. So I planted the tulip bulbs down the middle. And then what I'm going to do is plant pansies on the back side and the front side and kind of fill this and pack it in. Because even though it's a little bit chillier at night right now, pansies can handle the cold, you know, probably to around 30 degrees, they're probably okay. If it gets a little bit colder than that, I might have to throw a cover on them. But for the most part, they can handle having a little bit of cold and they'll bounce right back. That's what we love about them. So let me see what colors I grabbed. Ah, they're right over here. Okay, so look at these bad boys. These are so gorgeous. This color is the Matrix Spring Blue. So it's that nice, pretty light blue. It's got a yellow eye in the center of it. So we absolutely love those. Now, these are the Menton tulips, which are kind of like this deep, dark, uh, pinkish, mauve color. So those will look really nice with that. And then I'm going to add yellow in as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pop these right out of their cells, and I'm going to kind of go every other one. Now, I am never that person in the spring when she plants her pots that wants to just put one little plug and then move on and put another one because you know when these tulips are done I probably will replant this whole thing and so I'm going to use the pansies as that spring pot to give me my color right now um, I don't know that these will make it all the way into the summer usually pansies don't like the heat of the summer sometimes I can put them in the shade and they'll last a little bit longer but more times than not they just have a tendency to poop out and I'm okay with that I mean, a six pack of pansies is pretty inexpensive for me to be able to get some beautiful spring color outside. So what I'm gonna do is just pop these out of their cells. And I have, what I have here is four six packs. And I'm gonna plant them in groups of, let's see, two, four, six, eight. Yeah, probably in groups every other one. And I'll do like two uh, together in my little holes so that this gets nice and full. Now I thought about putting stock in here, but I decided to use the pansies instead because I wanted something to be lower and the tulips to be up over the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take two of my, two of my little pieces right here and I'm gonna put them together. I'm just gonna make a little hole in here and I'm gonna stuff those right in there. And then I'm gonna get two of the blues. And so I'm just going into the front of the pot and I'm just making my hole big enough that I can get those in there. And I'm gonna go every other one so that my tulips stay in the middle and these beautiful pansies go on the outside edge. So I'm gonna end with yellow. I started down on the other end, okay, down here with yellow. So now what I'm gonna do is on the other side, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm gonna start with blue, okay? And then I'm gonna add some yellow down here, and then I'm gonna add blue again. So I'm kinda opposite in the back of the color that I have in the front. There's my yellow, and then here's blue, and then here's yellow, 
And then I actually have one blue left, so I'm gonna pop one in at the very end on either end. So now this is all, look at that, nice and full. I'm gonna water that in. I'll take it outside for a couple hours today, then bring it back in. Then by tomorrow, because I think tonight's the last cold night, and then it's gonna actually get up into the 50s. I think I saw temperatures in the 60s too. And then our nighttime temperatures are above 35. So this will be totally fine outside, but we'll get it used to it a little bit today outside and then bring it back in and then take it out for the rest of the time tomorrow. So this one's all done and ready to go. These were the bulbs that we planted back in January. Okay. Now, another project that we did was we had decided that we were gonna try to pre-sprout some gladiolas. So I did the gladiolas in the container and look at these things, aren't they gorgeous? And I kind of kind of dug one out a little bit, but look at that nice root system on there. So what I'm gonna do with these is I'm actually going to pot them deeper in these, uh, these are what we call three and a half inch. Uh, they're just little potting pots that I, I don't know, other stuff came in them and I just keep them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pot this as low as I can get it. And I'm gonna take it all the way down into the pot and then I'm gonna backfill on top of it. And so now this one is potted deeper. I'm gonna water it in, put it in a tray and continue to grow it inside. I really don't wanna take these out for a couple more weeks. So I'm gonna to continue to grow them on in here. But by doing this in here, I'm going to be able to get bigger plants faster outside instead of waiting. Cause normally you wouldn't put your gladiola bulbs in the ground until like the second, maybe the second week in May. And you're gonna plant them, you know, three to four inches into the ground. These, when we did it, we just put them right on the top of the surface. And again, I don't want to just yank them out because I don't want to break those roots. So I'm going to use my little uh, weeder trowel here and I'm just going to get down underneath that. See, and I'm just going to loosen that up and pull those up nice and gently so I don't break all those roots. So I thought this was pretty successful. Basically what we did was we put these in the dirt, we kind of wiggled them down in there. We put them upstairs in a window and we kept them watered and that was it and they did a great job. A couple of them were slower to come up, but all in all, every single one of them germinated. I actually have two pots, there's that one there. And then I have another one here and out of everything that's in here, these two were really super slow and I had one. I had one little bulb that didn't come up. So this one here, I'll just throw in the garbage. It's been long enough that it should have because we did this back on March 15th. And so it's been, I don't know, what's the date today? Like the sixth or something like that. So it's been three weeks. So yeah, there you go, three weeks. Now, I'm gonna pot every one of them up like this. I'm gonna keep them in the greenhouse and we're gonna keep growing them on in here. Now, the other thing that we did was we decided we were gonna try the other way to pre-sprout it because this was my first time doing this and we did it in water. So here are the ones in water. As you can see, they're nowhere, the water's dipping out. They're nowhere as far along as these here. And what happened was these dried out super fast in the water. So if you're not paying attention like every day, making sure that there's a quarter inch of water on here, they dry out. So they are really super slow, more my fault than it was the gladiolus fault. Um, I just wasn't very consistent about keeping water in them. And so I ended up bringing them down here to the greenhouse and there was only like two or three of them that sprouted. And that was like a week ago. And once my greenhouse girl, Tina, started working down here every day, she was making sure there was water on there because I obviously was not a good steward of making sure there was water on them every day. But once she did that, now they are starting to sprout. So you can see here, look at that nice little green grow chip and I've got the little white roots coming out. So these are nowhere near as far along as those, not even close. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to let these kind of sprout up for another week, see how much more growth I can get on them, and then I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna get one of my thin walled pots. This is a three inch pot. I'm gonna plant it down in here as deep as it would go in the ground. Then I'm gonna fill it with dirt water and let them grow up in here. So this way, all I have to do is transfer this pot out into the garden when I'm ready to go. So both ways, they both worked. This would have worked better if I'd been more diligent about getting water on them, but I thought absolutely great success on both of those. And so those were the gladiolas. Now the cannas that we did are still upstairs. They have started to sprout. They're about this big. I did not bring those down, but those are not ready to go out or be moved over yet. Probably another two or three weeks. All right. All right, the other thing 
that we transplanted were the peas. So these are my peas here. These are the ones that we started and then we buried them deeper in the pots to keep them growing. As you can see, they're starting to get their tendrils and I will start hardening these off. So I'm gonna start taking these out starting today for a couple hours and getting them ready to be outside. I'll probably do it all weekend long and then next Monday, I'm gonna get these in the ground. I've got the bed ready to go. The trellis is ready for them to grow on and I have 38 plants that I'm gonna put out there. I'm pretty excited about the peas. So that's what's happening with those. They're all doing really well. And I have two full trays of these. Okay. The next thing that we grew was the broccoli and cauliflower. And the last time I showed this to you, these were itty bitty. And so these have grown up a little bit. Not every cell germinated. Uh, when I get in here and I look at these little cells, you know, I might have one, two, three, four, I've probably eight cells in here that didn't germinate. And so now is the time that I'm not quite ready to put them outside, but broccoli and cauliflower are one of those ones that if you don't get them up potted because you can't get them in the ground right away, you definitely wanna do that because you could have stunted growth with either one of these brasiliceus, I think that's how you say it, um, vegetables because they don't like to be root bound. And so what we're gonna do with these, again, I'm going to use the same size uh, three inch square pot that I used for the peas when I up potted them. I'm going to fill it with my potting soil about that far and then I'm just going to go ahead and take out my broccoli and again I'm looking for those roots to be nice and white. Look at how healthy those are. Okay so that looks really good. I'm going to get it down here. Oh I got a little bit too much dirt in there. I'm going to put that in my pot and then I'm going to backfill it. Now my roots have room to grow. I'm gonna put these in a tray and water them and let them keep growing for another week and then harden them off for three days and probably week after next, I will get the broccoli in the ground. Because as it's getting warmer outside, these will grow faster and faster and faster and it's pretty warm in the greenhouse. I think right now out here, let me go get my thermometer. Yeah, it's, it's it's 86 degrees in here. So it's pretty warm and we have a door open to circulate some air. I haven't turned the fans on yet because it's getting cold at night. So I'm trying to kind of capture as much warm air as I can in here to try not to turn the heaters on as much as, uh, as much as I probably will have to, but hopefully the weather's gonna break. So we're gonna do this with all of our broccoli and then we'll do the same thing with the cauliflower. We'll up plant all of them in these little containers and then these will be ready to go in about a week and a half into the garden. So I'm just gonna move these back over here. Okay, remember the lettuce bowls that we grew way back in January and then we cut on them and ate them uh, Valentine's Day that I did another video in March where we ate them. So they're starting to recover again and uh, they took a little bit longer to bounce back this time, but that's okay because we're gonna continue to let these grow out here. We'll probably cut on them one more time and eat them and then I'll probably be done, be done with these because by the time I cut on these, the ones in the garden that I'm gonna seed up tomorrow will be ready to be harvested and I won't need these anymore. But it was a fun project to do. Okay. Now I'm gonna show you one of my fails. This is my pak choy. <laughs> As you can see, I got absolutely nothing. I don't know what happened. They started to come up. I had two or three and then they just didn't do anything. And, and I just kept looking, I kept watering. I thought I overwatered them. I don't have any algae growth, so I don't, I'm not quite sure what happened, but I got nothing. It was a big fat fail. So these I'm gonna have to either start from seed in the ground or I'll have to start with transplants that I actually uh, bring into the garden center because I'm not gonna try it again, but big fail. So those didn't work for me. I'm not quite sure why, but you know what? Sometimes that happens, that's okay. We can move on and plant some more either with seed outside or bringing some transplants in. It'll be okay. Okay, so that I think catches us up on everything that we were going to get ready to go out to the garden. I wanted to just kind of give you an update on all of those things. Tomorrow, stay tuned because we will be going out to the garden and we will start planting seeds. Tonight's the last cold night, so I'm so excited to get out there and break some ground. Next week, stay tuned, we'll be planting some container gardens. We'll also be talking about some things that you can do out in the garden for spring cleanup. Thank you so much for joining us. My name is Michelle with the Landscape Connection. Happy gardening, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye now. Here I come. I'm going to turn you off. Have a good day.